today we're having a conversation with the great Ken Pooch van Druten. <laughs> we're going to talk a little bit about my personal setup, which I'm traveling with a lot, and it's LV1. Um, this is one of your bands that you work with, right? First of all, yes. We're going to hear today from a great band called Awa. They're super groovy, super cool girls. So let's hit play on our tracks live, <laughs> and uh, we'll start from there. <laughs> Cool, man. Sounds okay. really great. Thank you. So let's talk a little bit about your setup here. How many inputs do you have coming from the stage? Actually, because it's a small um, club show, we had it back to the basics. So we had 24 inputs of the band. We're talking about uh, standard drum set, 18 inputs for the drum set, computer playing some backing tracks, but not a lot. Band is playing mo mostly live. Cool. We had a bass guitar, we had a stereo keyboard, a guitar, a violin, which played only two, three songs. Guitar sings a bit, and the three ladies, our sisters, who are the front of the band. So to have a control over what's going on, I basically assign the things to my DCA layer, where basically the left side is populated with the AWA stuff. So do you spend most of your time in DCA land yes. when you're mixing? Yeah. Yeah. During the so show. I, that's what I do. During the show, yeah, that's yeah. The, because I find it the most convenient way of uh, shaping the picture. Yes. Okay, if something goes wrong, the first thing you can take the DCA and then you can actually get into the nitty gritty of right. this and adjust and stuff. So basically if I'm a drums and he hits the you know floor time and it's somewhat insane on drums going on, so I'm just hitting this and spill function, using a spill function basically shows me all of the inputs which are assigned to this particular DCA, which I can play with whatever input I want. That's kind of basic layer for the show. And these are all, uh, to point out, you know, there's no outboard effects here. It's it's all internal wave stuff. All you. So you're box. using H delay and True Verb. Exactly. Um, both of which I use all the time in my stuff as well. I love those plugins because they're light and very efficient. And being light and, and sound quick, great. and they yeah. sound great. So yeah. let's point out just real quick about the Emo series, you know. Yes. People may not know this, you know, it was specifically designed for the LV1 to Absolutely. be low latency, low CPU usage, and sound great. And so the Emo series is kind of the uh, the backbone of LV1 as far as EQ and dynamics. In fact, if you pull up a uh, standard session for your starting point, I think that there are, are yes, three Yes, actually of the three Emo. plugins. Yeah. Three plugins are located on each and every channel, which right. starts with the basic filter Emo F2, then it's uh, Emo Emo Q4 for parametric equalizer with the four bands. And the last one, this is Emo D5, yes. which is five dynamic processors uh, within one interface. We have a gate, compressor, uh, we have leveler, deesser, limiter, and output section, which allows you to do a parallel processing. And this is the basic three plugins, as you said, as you noted, basically on on every basic channel, default. So it's like, yeah, channel. that's your default way. And then you could take all those off and use whatever plugins you wanted to use, but that's kind of the default channel strip, right? Absolutely. So it's all the tools that you would need that you're used to um, with other consoles. You know, high pass filtering, EQ, uh, and a dynamic section Absolutely. Is, is the main part of a, the meat of the console. Having so many different colors and tools in your toolbox For sure. always helps. Because life situation is unpredictable. Life situation is changes all the time. We have different kind of vocals with different kind of situations. So that helps me to shape it to to the level of uh, where I want it to be. So I'm just gonna go a little bit about over the some channels what I'm using and how I'm using it. Starting with the kick drum. What I have here is my Emo D5, which I love and I use it as a gate in this particular situation, no compression. I have the SSL. Well, you have to love the E channel, yeah, it's SSL one of my E channel, audience. and some Transex White to get the, some transients out. I use it on the scenario a lot. It's interesting that you're using it on kick drum. This plugin it really helps me to stick out the drums and have it nice and pointy and a little bit of that attack going on. It never disappears. Cool. That's what's great about Transex. And controlling some low end. As you see, it's very tiny bit of 50 hertz. But again, this is plugin will change depending on the venue. 
yes. some venues with a lots of subwoofers, lots of and I'm, I'm, I'm really going to bypass it. Very similar approach to the snare drum, although somewhat uh, slightly different settings. No Emo D5 in this one, but I have the uh, standard F2 just to shape a little bit cool. uh, um, some drums, and my probably favorite frequency uh, around 190, yeah, 180 get all that hertz. Meat of the snare drum. Exactly. Yeah. So I always found it uh, happening around 180, 190 hertz. Yeah. Um, SSL, how you can do it. Just if you have no need even for SSL, just throw the SSL out. It's never going to make it worse, <laughs> you know, and try as X. You yeah. know, it's just salt and pepper. SSL, yeah, yeah. It just, uh, it's always good. Do you use the, in the SSL, do you use the dynamic section? Do you use the Sometimes compression? I use the compression on this because I love it. I think it's, it's great Because it's sounding. a great sounding compression. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I do use a compression on okay, this. Cool. Uh, and then a snare bottom, which is nothing extraordinary. Toms, again, Pretty similar approach as my drums. I usually use some combination of Emo D5 for the gating, some SSL probably for the dynamics a little bit, some EQing and TransX to get it stick out in cool. the mix. Same approach to the floor drum, but in addition to the floor drum, uh, I'm usually adding some R bass, again, depending on the venue, but in many cases I'm finding that um, there's not enough low-end impact Got on it. the floor of on the floor tom because you want it when it hits you want it to be somewhat massive if possible of not too massive of no, course but yeah. you want to feel it so and it's definitely floor tom already belongs to the kick family of uh, percussive instruments yes so some r bass always is in here again depending on frequency and amount always depending on the venue and on the source itself and overheads and Here's my thing with the overheads. Again, this is a great plus that we can use the studio tricks for our stuff. So that's usual, a little bit usual low cut, yeah. a little bit of the top EQing. Just again, as you see, nothing is uh, ridiculous at two to yeah. three dBs. And of course, one uh, of the, my favorite overhead plugins, Quick yes. Child. It makes that um, soft without you know, it's not harsh. Overhead's never harsh. Yeah, yeah. And it brings it just a little bit up and together with everything else, it's kind of makes, it finishes your drum sound. It's interesting, uh, you know, when I started as a recording engineer in the late 80s, uh, I worked at um, a studio in Los Angeles called Ocean, and they had um, five or six of the stereo Fairchilds. And they were always in the back rack and nobody ever like touched them or used them. But this one engineer, very famous engineer, I won't say his name, but uh, always came in to work at Ocean specifically to work with the Fairchilds. And that's what he did with them a lot was overhead stuff and cymbal stuff. And I learned that from him. And so when Waves uh, modeled, you know, uh, Jack Joseph Puig's uh, Fairchild, I was so in heaven because I'm like, oh, I, I know this from analog days, you know, now I have this plugin. So it's really cool that you're using it in the same way. Well, to be, you know, in complete, being completely honest, yeah. in, uh, I have to disclose that <laughs> I picked that trick from you. So. Ah, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> oh, cool. You uh, see, but that's well, where I learned it from. So yeah, this kind of you goes. know what? This is a great conversation because it, I always tell people I didn't make any of this up. Uh, everything that I do to this day as an engineer was not something that I went, oh, I'm so smart, I know how to do this. It's because I watched some of the best engineers in the world do it. Um, and and it's I think it's our job to pass that on to other people. So it's, gentlemen, it's really learning awesome. from the best, it's <laughs> always worth it. Always do that. Yeah. Uh, so that's awesome. But anyway, let me play just drums a little bit uh, by itself, so we have cool. an idea yes, a little bit what's the final uh, drum sound we came up with, and. So we can hear it's pretty massive. It's yeah, right in your groove. face. Great it's a groove. great groove. Yeah, yeah. You can hear. You can really hear the uh, the R bass on the kick drum. You know, getting that low. You know, 50 hertz in there, especially in a smaller club kind of situation. You need to. You know, you always wish sometimes in a, in a big yeah, arena that you have yeah. that 
tight low end like you can get oh, in the club. Oh man, I know. It's amazing. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So that's cool. pretty much the drum story. By the way, what I'm used right now, I use the solo and everybody, um, for those who are using KLV1 and learning KLV1, um, solo usually we're using to uh, hear or audition audio in your headphones. Correct. And right now we actually hear it in EPA. That's a trick which LV1 allows you in our uh, monitor section, which you can say operation, a cue operation can be set to cue or solo. When it's in a cue mode, when I'm gonna solo my drums, I'm gonna hear it only in my headphones. In yep. EPA, it's gonna play the full audio, full playback, without, uh, without soloing actually. They the call particular... it destructive solo. Absolutely, right solo in place, that's yeah. another name for this. So actually in here, we call it solo in place, we mark it as solo in place. So yeah. Guys, it should be a big guys, red please, button. Yeah. Be careful. <laughs> be careful. So yeah. when you have actually in your show time, during your show time, please switch on a cue. Yeah. So you actually, when you solo your things, it's cued in your headphones only, yeah. and you're not muting everything else in the PA. <laughs> so, but the old uh, 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 Minus XL4 had the, had the red button with yes. the, like a missile flip yes. button on it, you know? That's, solo in place, that's absolutely. That so that's what it is. But today for the our... Um, Demo purposes, we, we use the solo in place function. So we actually, during sound check, it's actually very helpful. It is very much, yeah. Just make sure you take it out of that function when you're yes. doing your show. Yes. Um, so yeah. it's a job safety. It is, yes. <laughs>